Hi, this is Steve Rowe, Executive Director. Uh, today is Wednesday, August 26th, and it is my turn to do the weekly video update for all of you. Um, Johnson County case counts are incredibly high right now. Uh, they, they're at their highest level than, than they've been since this whole COVID situation started. Um, I was in early this morning prior to our board meeting and just had looked at the, um, the coronavirus uh, data. And I'm just gonna read uh, the last five days worth of data. Uh, August 24th, or August 21st rather, there were 64 cases, followed by 56 cases, 80 cases on August 23rd, 115 positive cases in Johnson County on August 24th, and 25 yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, the, the moving 14-day daily average is at its highest point uh, since we started this whole situation. Uh, most recently, as of yesterday, that moving uh, daily average is 42.1. Uh, as a frame of reference, when we went from phase one to phase two with our reopening plan, it was at 21.9. And when we went to phase three, uh, in retrospect with the restated data, and that's another issue that's like I, I may talk about here, uh, the, the restated data said that uh, as of August 4th, when we went to phase three and started to allow visitors back into the building, we were at 23.9 cases per day for the, for the most recent 14 days. So we're almost twice that level uh, currently, and that is why we made the decision on Monday uh, to revert back to phase one, to stop visitor access into all levels uh, at Oak Knoll. Um, and, and it was really kind of a no-brainer decision when we saw the data uh, that came out over the weekend. We really had to, uh, to shut down again. So um, many of you have, uh, have uh, sent notes of appreciation or stopped us in the hallway and said thank you uh, for, for doing that. I know that some people like, may not be as pleased that we did that, but again, all of, all of the efforts are intended to try to keep this Oak Knoll community as safe and healthy as we possibly can. Um, so that's, that's where we are right now related to COVID. Um, I wanna provide an update on the employee who had tested positive. It's been about two and a half weeks ago. Uh, that employee is back at work now. Uh, fortunately, uh, because, because the employee was wearing the personal protective equipment uh, that we have required since March of our healthcare providers, nobody else was infected. Um, so it's like that, that employee would have been wearing a mask and shield as they were doing their job. Uh, nobody was infected and the employee has fully recovered and is back at work now. So as of this moment, we have no active cases amongst our residents where we've never had any and no, uh, no active cases from our staff where we have had two so far uh, over the last several months. Um, so we feel good about that. Uh, we know that wearing the, the PPE does work to, uh, to stop the spread. So we just really wanna encourage you to continue to do that. Wear a mask or wear the shield. And many of you have those. Um, and if you're out, out in public, uh, please just try to stay away from people, uh, social distance and wash your hands. Uh, we know that those things work. Um, a quick update, it's like we do have some uh, positive news from a business standpoint. Uh, we have signed three new life care contracts uh, over the last few weeks. So we will have some new neighbors moving into Oak Knoll uh, sometime soon. Uh, and we also have one internal household that will be relocating. Um, so that, as, as difficult as the environment is, 
Uh, we have seen an uptick in activity recently with people feeling more comfortable coming in for prospective resident appointments. So I truly appreciate all of you uh, kind of spreading the word, letting people know uh, that if they're at all interested, uh, this would be a good time uh, to come and at least get the, the initial uh, information about Oak Knoll and how we work and what a great community we are. Um, we will have several households uh, over the next uh, couple of months who relocate from Oak Knoll, our one university place, over to, uh, to Oak Knoll East as that opens up. Um, so just there's going to be some opportunity, there will be some spaces available and, and we will be able to serve more people if they're ready to be served. Uh, Oak Knoll East is going well. Uh, construction continues to stay on progress or on track. Um, the storm recently, we were incredibly lucky, uh, both at the main campus where really it's like we had uh, a little bit of tree damage, uh, one broken window, and the most significant event was we've got a, pine, a large pine tree that is uh, resting on the Helms' garage currently. Uh, about a 40 to 50 foot pine tree was uprooted and ended up on their, on their garage. Um, but incredibly lucky here uh, relative to what happened you now through the rest of Iowa City and certainly in the Cedar Rapids and Marion area. Uh, so that all is good um, and at Oak Knoll East we really had no damage to the, to the uh, uh, construction project as well. Some trees down in the wooded ravines but, uh, but they still look like a forest and, um, and really very, uh, very lucky um, to have the result that we did. So I want to circle back to the data discrepancy that some of you may have heard about. Um, uh, the, the source that we have used for keeping track of, of data and trying to make good uh, informed decisions for our community, um, there is a, a website um, that coronavirus.org or something like that. I, I don't I know how to get there, but I don't know the exact name of the of the site. Uh, but between August 18th and August 20th, there was a pretty significant restatement. Um, when I checked uh, on August 20th um, and started to see some numbers for, for previous dates that were different, I actually went back to the very beginning of, of the whole COVID situation back to March. And nearly every day, it wasn't quite every day, but nearly every day, the numbers were different. And the numbers in some cases were significantly different. Uh, an example, the most extreme example, was there was a day that uh, the number originally reported was one, and then between August 18th and August 20th, that day had been uh, changed to 40 cases. Um, so it's very, very frustrating uh, because we have been making decisions based on the best data that we had available, and when that data changed, our decision to move from phase two to phase three, um, really, uh, if we had had the restated data uh, back on August 4th when we made that decision, uh, we would not have gone to phase three because when we did that, when we allowed visitors back into our building, uh, it was actually during an uptick in cases uh, with the restated data. And for f the five days prior to August 4th, we had actually seen an increasing trend rather than a decreasing trend. So there's nothing we can do about it. Fortunately, we, um, we survived that situation. Uh, we're now almost a month removed from, from that, um, from that uh, decision, um, and there weren't any negative consequences to the Oak Knoll community. Uh, so we're thankful for that, but again, frustrated with sometimes the lack of reliable information and I would say just generally frustrated with the, uh, the activity that's happening within Johnson County right now. We absolutely expected that when students came back, we would see an uptick. 
uh, but the worst expectations have come true and now we just need to hunker down again, uh, try to stay safe and let this pass. Uh, the, the trend will decrease um, over time here uh, and as soon as it's safe to allow visitors back into the building, we will, we will let you know. Um, I guess that's it for today. Thank you.